Welcome. This is Cheryl from Club Creative. Let's go. A couple of weeks ago, I wrote part one of my scene structure series, which featured the large scale structure of a scene. In brief, a scene followed by a sequel. Uh, you can find the link to that in this article on my website. This new lesson also relies heavily on Dwight Swain's 1965 book on writing, Techniques of the Selling Writer, which is a wonderland of helpful information about writing a novel. Randy Ingemanson also relied heavily on Dwight for his Snowflake Theory website and books. I don't use his, this method, but it is well worth the read, and his software is very good. Once again, I stress that these techniques are merely tools for writers to use and reference, and we do not set them in stone. <laughs> like any writing guidelines or lessons, try it. Take what works for you, leave the rest, or come back to them later. <laughs> okay. Dwight Swain says that each scene must consist of motivation and reaction units. And this lets us navigate through a pattern of emotion. This scene. Wendy woke to a pounding at her door. She looked at the alarm clock as she threw on her house cloak. 3 a.m.? She raced down the stairs and threw open the door to see two police officers standing, looking serious and efficient. Her breath caught and she froze. Ms. Mavis, the policewoman, waited for a nod of the head. I'm sorry to inform you that your son was in a car accident tonight. Wendy gulped air and held it and died from wounds received as a result. Wendy shut the door on them where they stood and collapsed to the ground. Her mind was blank in refusal. After a time, her hands twitched and then shook, and the rest of her body quickly followed. She was cold, bitterly cold, and then her mouth opened and a mewling sound began that grew in intensity until it was the howl of a wild animal from the very centre of her being. It cut off sharply for lack of oxygen. Later, the tears came. What happened? One, the character receives a motivation stimulus. Wendy woke to a pounding on the door at 3am and is told her son is dead. Two, this points to a change in her situation that causes a change in her state of mind and her emotional state. Three, then we see an observable reaction from the character. She becomes cold, shakes, and howls at the agony and finally cries. And there is a three-part pattern of emotion. Okay, the order is crucial. To construct a motivation reaction unit, the order is absolutely crucial. The motivation must come before the reaction. Mikey stood on a pin. He grabbed his foot and yelped. Consider it the other way around. Mikey grabbed his foot and yelped. He'd stepped on a pin. It's awkward and not satisfying. A shot rang from the end of the street. Mary started. Is more powerful than... Mary started when a shot rang up from the end of the street. The cause... The motivation stimulus must be real and visible, something your character can see, hear, smell, taste, or especially feel. The effect, the character's reaction, the order is just as important in this group of responses from intuitive to controlled action. A. A feeling. Feeling is not the same as thought. If a scream sounds behind you, you are startled, and your heart races before you think, what was that? Feeling is a subconscious reaction. You do not decide to feel a particular way. You might be able to change how you feel, but you don't start off that way. B, action can be controlled to a degree. You jump out of the way when you hear the scream, but this follows your initial feeling. Speech. Only when you are in control can you respond verbally. After feeling and action, you might scream, Hey, are you all right? The motivation is objective and external. The reaction is subjective and internal. Get the timing right. 
The motivation is less complex than the reaction and will probably require less writing. In the scene above, the knock on the door, the clock and going downstairs are all setting. The motivation is, I'm sorry to inform you that your son was in a car accident tonight, Wendy gulped air and held it, and died from wounds received as a result. This is because external processes happen more quickly. Mikey stood on a pin, a shot ran out, and that's it, they've happened. Internal processes happen on a different time scale. In the first millisecond, Wendy is shocked and blank. Then, seconds, minutes or hours later, and still in shock, she shakes and becomes cold and screams as she comes to believe. Finally, she cries for her loss, and her initial reaction is finished. You present these reactions in the order of their time frames, that is, fastest to slowest, or immediate reflexive reaction to controlled reaction. If you get them out of order, your, read, your reader might feel something's wrong, even if they can't quite put their finger on what it is that's bothering them. Can I leave a part out? Here's a new scene. Gillian unlocked the front door slowly and with care to be as quiet as possible. She removed her high heels and stepped onto the wooden floor inside, allowing her eyes to adjust to the lack of light. She took two tentative steps up the stairs. Where the hell have you been? A harsh voice came from the lounge room. Setting. She freezes and her sweating fingers let her shoes drop to the stair. Her throat closes. Feeling. Three months grounded, if he caught her one more time, he'd said. Tears fell and her voice came in sobs. Action. I, um, I was... And her dreaded hiccups returned, closing her throat and causing squeaking eruptions. Action again. Go to bed, we'll speak in the morning. Her damp hands clenched and her chest tightened. She ground her teeth as she slapped at the tears on her face. This sucks, Dad. I'm old enough to do as I wish. Speech. Sometimes the action and dialogue make clear one or two of these parts and we can leave them out. But we can't leave out all three because then we have no reaction. Hey Annie, he called, you good? I'm great. Hey Annie, he called, you good, is the motivating stimulus. If we wanted, we could spell out Annie's character reaction like this. A, feeling. Annie glowed because he remembered her name. B, action. She smiled. Speech. I'm great. Here we've dropped two of the three because it seems likely that Annie might smile given how excited she is to see him and know he remembered her name. <laughs> we might leave out Annie's dialogue and just go with her smile or write it many other ways. But the order A, B, C must remain. The parts you keep in must be in the correct order. A feeling must come first and a reflex comes before a rational action. Rinse and repeat. Having completed an MRU, Motivation Reaction Unit, you write one and another and again until the scene is finished. How do you know your scene's finished? Read part one. <laughs> there are more suggestions and information in Dwight Swain's Technique of the Selling Writer, and I strongly suggest a read if this sort of structure discussion makes any sense to you at all. I've tried this method, and I've honestly found it hard to do while I'm composing, but it is seriously useful as a tool during editing and to pace the story and move it forward. Also, like all things in the writing craft, the more you do, the easier it becomes. Thanks, guys. See you on prompt day, <laughs> based on this. <laughs>